Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. An intense start to the James Crumbly involuntary manslaughter trial. He was the adult out of anyone in the world in the best position to prevent these kids' deaths. James Crumbly did not know what his son was going to do. The first day of testimony featuring a dramatic 911 call placed by the defendant. Glad you're with us tonight for Local 4 News at 6. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. Much of the evidence seen today was also part of Jennifer Crumbly's trial. Things like the shooter's school worksheet and text messages between James and Jennifer. But then there were things like the gun lock purchased along with the pistol used in the Oxford school shooting. The prosecution pointing out it had never even been removed from its packaging, let alone applied to the gun. And near the end of the proceedings, a dramatic 911 call was played in which James Crumbly tells the dispatcher, I think my son took the gun. Sean Lay was in court live with us now to break it all down on day one. Sean. Devin, you're hitting on a key point. This 911 call made as the shooting was unfolding at Oxford High School back in 2021. The call is from James Crumley. You have to listen very closely to it. We can hear every word in court, but right now listen closely because you can hear Crumley calling 911 assuming his son is the shooter. A panicked call to 911 from James Crumley, November 30th, 2021, as the Oxford High School shooting rampage was unfolding. Prosecutors playing the call for the jury late today to show that Crumley did not rush to the school to see if his son was safe during the shooting. He rushed home to look for the 9mm handgun he bought for his son, but hid in the house. Someone told me that there was an shooter, and then I went home prosecutors playing the call to highlight that crumley had just come from an emergency school meeting with his son that school officials were concerned about violent images and writings on his son's math test crumley did not tell the school that morning that he bought his son a nine millimeter handgun four days prior but in the 911 call he knew that the gun was not locked up and he assumed his son was the shooter prosecutors say that is gross negligence from james crumley knowing others could be in danger and doing nothing about it this is just day one of this trial, so James Crumley's attorney, Mary Lehman, will get her chance to state her case and her case to the jury. But she did make it clear today during opening statements that perhaps we will hear from James Crumley indicating that he will testify he did not know what his son was capable of. And she'll point to that important meeting two hours before the shooting that no one thought of the shooter as a danger as they sent him off back to class. Look, a lot today, more tomorrow. It starts back up here at 9 a.m. Back to you. Now, all right, Sean, so tonight at 8 o'clock on Local 4 Plus, you can watch some of today's testimony. We are, again, remember streaming the entire trial so you can see the testimony as it happens. Just download the Local 4 Plus app wherever you find your streaming content or scan the QR code on your screen right now. World-renowned author, sports columnist, and Metro Detroiter Mitch Album is stuck in the middle of a crisis situation playing out on the streets of Haiti. There's conflict as armed groups have taken over the airport, hoping to prevent the prime minister from returning. But it's also creating travel problems for Americans looking to evacuate. Hank Winchester spoke to Album tonight. Hank, how's he doing? Yeah, I mean, the most important thing, Kimberly, is that Mitch is safe. The children in his orphanage, they are safe. But as you can imagine, just outside of the orphanage, complete chaos tonight in Haiti. Mitch Album loves Haiti, the children and the people. But the accomplished author and humanitarian now stuck in Haiti with other Americans. They're working to leave, escape the violence breaking out and return home. However, it's becoming a challenge as this crisis plays out. There's no planes, there's no boats, there's no uh, way out. Everything's been shut down by the gangs. Currently, there are riots, gang fights, and chaos in parts of Haiti. It's all part of a fierce political battle for power. Some creating this chaos in an attempt to prevent the prime minister from returning. The main airport taken over, leaving impossible. But for the most part, there's a curfew here starting at, I think, 6 o'clock at night until 5 o'clock in the morning. So nobody goes out, nobody's allowed out. 
Album founded his orphanage here in Haiti not long after the devastating, deadly earthquake in 2010. While there may be chaos on the streets right outside the walls of the orphanage, the children are safe. Well, there's no such thing as a safe, secure area, right. totally, especially in Port-au-Prince. But for the moment, we're safe. Our kids are amazing, and they're you know, joyous and faithful, and we're keeping them occupied. I asked Mitch if he's heard anything uh, from the government there in Haiti or from the State Department here in the U.S. Uh, offering a message or information to Americans that are there. He said absolutely nothing. Communication almost at zero. Why this is a horrible crisis again for the people of Haiti, for that country. Mitch says if there is one glimmer of hope, it will then uh, turn attention and the news media's attention to Haiti and what is really going on there. I'm going to stay in touch with Mitch. Uh, he is, again, safe right now, but working every day to get home. We will keep you updated as he tries to make his way back here to Metro Detroit. Yeah. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, help me hang. Yeah, back please do keep us updated. All right, Hank, thank you. Well, we have an update on our lead story yesterday here at 6, an investigation of possible voter intimidation in Plymouth Township. Concerns were raised when surveillance cameras showed someone installing fake cameras near an election ballot box right around the time of Michigan's early in-person voting period last month. Police tell us they have located the man in this video, that he is being cooperative with their investigation. The case will be sent to the state level for review and possible charges. We'll let you know what happens. A financial dilemma many in Metro Detroit face. Failing septic fields forcing them to connect to city sewer service where available. But for one local family, it has been a mad scramble this week. What should have been a simple one-day job became a very drawn-out ordeal. Rob Maloney live tonight in Southfield, where some old blueprints didn't provide much help, Rod. Devin, can you imagine if this was your yard? And this is what they're looking at. I got a phone call last night about this, and the problem was that on Monday they came out here and started digging. And they kept digging and digging and digging and could not find the sewer line. And remember that the family here is paying out of its own pocket for a job that's well in excess of $10,000. Drone 4 gives us the bird's eye view of this sewer saga's scope. Ryan Sims bought this house 16 years ago, had to have county ordered septic inspections every three years, and knew this year time and aging pipes and tank would force his hand. I just thought that I, I might as well just go ahead and get connected to the city because I was going to fill the inspection anyways. So I didn't want to waste the money to pay for an inspector. So Ryan's contractor showed up Monday, started digging. Then Tuesday, still couldn't find the sewer line. Oh, can't use washing dryers, minimum with the toilet. You know, it was, it was, it was quite a, a headache. They called the city who sent out engineers with blueprints to find the sewer line. And by Thursday midday, they still could not find it. They couldn't find it. They went to where, where the city said they were, where the city said the, uh, the tap was, and there was no tap. Finally, amid the oil pipeline, water pipeline, and fiber optic cable underground wires, they found the sewer line without what they call the riser. The city is supposed to provide that. Remember, the cash register is ringing with every scoop of dirt, causing stress and aggravation. We spoke with Southfield Mayor Kenson Cyber on the phone today. He tells Local 4 there was no ill intent on the city's part here. They do want to see these hookups go smoothly. I'm greatly appreciative to have my the sewer uh, connected now, you know. It's been real hectic the last few days. Now, there is still an inspection that has to be accomplished tomorrow to make sure that everything is set. They can fill the hole back in and try and get back to normal as they understand it here. But it has been quite the week for the Sims family. Back to you. Well, Rob, did the city say why it was so difficult to find the line? Well, you know, Southfield's been here a long time. The sewer line has been here a long time. And what they're yeah. saying is, is that these sewer lines were put in way back before it was even a city, when it was a township. And so the records and maybe even the technology of those days didn't hold up very well. And so the sewer line location is probably more suggestion than it is, say, <laughs> blueprint. Apparently so. Yeah, yeah, really. Boy, what a mess. All right, Rod. Wow. Well, it is National Women in Construction Week. Recent data shows women make up less than 10% of the construction industry in the U.S. As Megan Woods reports, there are women right here at home who are not only working in this field, but ready to help other women do the same. 
We're right off of Gratiot on Detroit's east side where these women are knocking down stereotypes in their industry one demolition at a time. You might come across a few men that might say, hey, you know, you should be at home with the kids cooking and cleaning and it's just like, hey, I want to make money too. And this is how they choose to do that. It may seem unconventional to some, but for Lauren Davis, it's a dream come true. She grew up watching her father work in the same business. I always said that, hey, I'm going to be in that machine one day. Now, here she is not just operating an excavator, but the first woman to do it for the company she works for, Guyanga. We have about 40 employees, and I would say we have about 10 women. This company is one of many that are contracted for City of Detroit demolitions, and one of the people to coordinate that is also a woman. I think it's important for women to be able to work anywhere that they want to work. Uh, thank companies that open opportunities for women to do that work. I thank the city of Detroit for being open for that. Our director is a woman. The hope is that they encourage more women to get into hard hats and work boots. I'm a proponent of skilled trades as well, so if you don't want to go to college, there's another path that provides a great living wage, phenomenal benefits. And contrary to any belief, no matter how loud and dirty this job gets, this work doesn't make them any less of a woman. I still have my nails, makeup, lashes. <laughs> I'm still able to be me and still get the job done. In Detroit, Megan Woods, Local 4. <laughs> women constructing change. I love that so much. We appreciate your report, man. You, know, you know any women who drive uh, big rigs? Well, you know, you I was been there. one of you very few yeah, yeah, back yeah. then. All right, look at today. Wow, still the sun shining here at 6 yeah. 11. Really comfortable out. <laughs> Let's see what we've got coming our way as the weekend is starting to come into view. Kim? Well, one nice thing about winter is that we get some really pretty sunsets with all those pinks and yellows and oranges and that's kind of what we're getting right now here in Metro Detroit as temps are still in the 50s. It's 50 in Detroit, 50 in Howell, 51 in Pontiac and 46 in Adrian. Bus stop forecast tomorrow will have cloudy skies in the morning. Temps will be in the upper 30s. Then in the afternoon we do get some rain and it looks like that rain, the timing of it has moved up just a little bit as we'll have temps in the low 50s. That rain is going to come in more like between one and three as opposed to later in the evening. And so we're hoping it gets out of here a little earlier on Saturday as well. 50 in Mount Clemens, 51 at City Airport and also in Pontiac, 50 at Metro. It's about 10 degrees warmer right now in many spots than it was the same time yesterday. And we will be uh, back into the low 50s again tomorrow. We have a little bit of a chill this weekend and then back to 60s next week. We'll talk about it coming up.